Well, hello there and welcome back to The Second Shelf. This is the second part of my Answers to Your Assumptions, um, a video that I made in May, celebrating my three years on BookTube. I will leave a link to that video and the first part uh, down below and I will get on now with the second part and try to be a little bit brief, which is difficult for me. So on to the list with assumptions. Next up is, oh, Leo. Hello, Leo from A Little Book Life, a relatively new channel. Uh, he's a fellow Dutch um, citizen, so go check out his channel. Uh, congratulations, Britta. Well, thank you, Leo. Um, uh, assumptions. Uh, well, since I'm a, a fellow Dutch citizen, yes, you are. I've known you for a really long time. <laughs> I assume you have. Uh, I remember you being interviewed in news programs and talk shows years ago, and I know about the things uh, that you do now. Yeah, for those of you who don't know me, um, uh, I when I was a lawyer, um, I, I was quite often, you know, um, doing interviews because I had a couple of cases that were quite high profile and people were interested in hearing more about it. Um, but his assumption, one assumption I have is that you had a, have a great sense of humor and I believe I'm not wrong. Well, of course you're not wrong, Leo. <laughs> of course I have a great sense of humor. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I, I love a good joke and I love uh, people who uh, tell a good joke really well. So I, I hope Leo is right. Uh, Cardenio 2012 uh, says, I assume you are very successful and influential, a lot more so than you appear on your channel. Uh, and you look very successful in your profession. I also assume when you are alone, <laughs> you let your hair down and put no makeup on and take a long nap just because. Um, congratulations on your anniversary and I love your channel. Well, thank you very much, Cadenio 2012. Um, well, I don't know uh, whether I'm influential, but as a lawyer, I was quite successful. So yes, um, as a writer, um, we will have to see. I uh, published a couple of books and they got good reviews, but by no way, by no means I've made it as a writer. So I have to work hard on that uh, for the coming years. Um, and you let your hair down. No, I don't. Uh, in fact, when I'm alone, I have, you know, a bun on top. Uh, not very sophisticated, but I do uh, uh, like long naps, especially in the afternoon. Um, the siesta, which is underrated, I think, uh, is a fantastic institution. Everybody should have siestas in the afternoon. And I indeed wear no makeup when I'm at home. Um, reflective, ram reflective rambling says, congrats on three years. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, and then there's an assumption about my law background and that I can't stand reading legal fiction when it's uh, not accurate. Well, I answered that already, that this is one of my big book pet peeves when I read uh, uh, crime novels, you know, when they get things wrong. I hate it. Um, and then uh, there's a long uh, assumption that... Uh, 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 a reflective rambling, reflective ramblings wants to hear about my international law work. Well, I don't know whether people are interested. If you are interested, I, I'm willing to make a video about it, but I don't think that a lot of people would be interested in that. But let me know. Um, Bada Hortz from um, uh, uh, Robert from Bada Hortz, also a very lovely channel, and by the way, the organizer of the BookTube Prize. So yeah, Robert. Uh, my assumption is the same as Eric's. How do you balance being an attorney, a writer, and an active reader, content creator? Well, I think I've answered that question already, that I, I do like to organize, I do like to schedule, and I don't have to take other people's uh, consideration, other people's, you know, needs into consideration that much as I live alone. Um, Alicia Campos says... Um, uh, your first, my, her, the first assumption is you despise injustice. Well, I think I answered that. Uh, if you are a lawyer, you are in it for justice and not for injustice. Um, you become a lawyer. You became a lawyer because of number one. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I had this, you know, idea of saving the world when I was young, uh, and that was the reason that I became a lawyer. Uh, if you hadn't been a lawyer, uh, you would have been a scientist, a physicist, or chemist. 
that is actually a really good assumption because when I was uh, done with high school, I was really, I, I, I wanted maybe to study law. That was one thing, but I was c contemplating uh, physics uh, uh, and mathematics. So you are spot on, Alicia. Um, uh, you are a city person is her fourth assumption, but enjoy nature, walks and holidays. I'm a city person, that's for sure. I grew up in a city, not a huge city, but still a city. And no, I'm not a nature person. I mean, I do enjoy uh, walking, um, you know, uh, taking walks in, in parks or uh, forests or something, but I'm absolutely not a nature person. No, too much nature, not good for me. Uh, Carol A says, congratulations on your third booktube anniversary. Well, thank you, Carol A. Um, and she assumes that you have enjoyed reading all of your life and that books and readings, reading have been very much a part of your life since childhood. Well, that, that's absolutely true. That's a true assumption. Uh, I was always a reader. Um, um, I grew up in, like I said previously, I think in the first video, I'm an only child. Uh, but my mother was an avid reader always. So I can't remember a time that I didn't read. I mean, there was a time when I was very little because I couldn't read, but books and reading was always a big part of my life. So that's true. Uh, Cheryl Holson Bake um, says, I assume you have fresh cut flowers in your home. You know me well, Cheryl, because that's true. I always do. Um, I'm, even though I'm not a nature person, I, I always have at least one, mostly two, uh, bunch of fresh flowers in, in the living room and the, the dining area. So yeah, that's true. Um, Heil Slory, I'm sure, sorry, I'm, I'm, I probably butchered your name. Um, um, her assumptions or his assumptions, I don't know. You get to bed fairly early and get up really early because you enjoy the quiet morning hours and find that time most productive. No, I'm not a morning person. Never have been. Um, I, except from when I was really little, I irked my parents, I think, because I would always get up really early. And on Sundays, I would wait until seven. And then I thought, well, it's now time to get up. But after my teenage years, no. Um, I don't like getting up early, even though when I do, I enjoy the quiet mornings, but I always work a lot at night uh, because then it's quiet. So, no, I'm sorry. You take your coffee strong and black. I take it strong, but not black, because even though I'm a coffee junkie, I don't particularly like the taste of coffee. <laughs> so I have to put milk in it in order to make it bearable for me. Um, number three, you prefer having a very small group of close friends that you trust implicitly rather than a large group of acquaintances. Yes, that's true. I answered that question already in the first part. Uh, you don't enjoy cooking, but you enjoy trying new foods. Um, also true. You know me well. Um, I'm not a, a big cook. Uh, I, I don't enjoy it. Uh, I started cooking um, more for myself because I needed to eat better uh, only recently, but I do enjoy trying new foods. I basically eat everything except oysters. So I always love food and I love trying out new stuff. And the last assumption, you have an impressive art collection. No, I don't. I have, I collect some art, mainly photography, and I have a couple of uh, pieces that I really value, but I don't have the money to have a really big art collection, unfortunately. Um, Sarah K says, I assume you don't really like Germany, which is why you live in Amsterdam. Uh, she says, I live in the Netherlands and have a lot of friends who are German and uh, feel this way. Um, well, um, yes, no. I mean, I live in Cologne now, so not in Amsterdam anymore. Um, and I don't like German politics a lot of the time. And uh, but it was not the reason that I moved to Amsterdam. I moved to Amsterdam because my then husband lived there and couldn't move to Germany. So it was more a personal reason and not a political one. Uh, Mel's Bookland Adventures. I <laughs> Hello, Mel. <laughs> uh, lovely channel. 
links of course down below. I assume that you don't like wurst salad and I assume that you rather drink red wine than white wine. Uh, well, uh, I don't uh, like wurst salad, that's true. That's a salad made out of sausage uh, because first of all, I don't eat meat and second of all, uh, it's, it's too... Um, too greasy for me. I, I, I don't like it. And I do prefer red wine, uh, but that's an acquired taste. When I was younger, I, I liked uh, uh, white wine, but over the years, I, I, decide, I, I had my preference changed, and now I drink uh, a red wine, and in the summer, I drink rosé, because you can keep it chilled. Um, let me see here. Um, Minea Pietreano, again, sorry, probably butchering this name. I always assumed Lotte in Weimar is one of your favorite books by Thomas Mann, um, but it's not listed. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I like Lotte in Weimar. Thomas Mann is a German writer, and my first book was about him. So, you know, I read a lot of T Thomas Mann, but my really absolute all-time favorite by Thomas Mann is one of his shorter works. For him, shorter means 400 plus pages, and that's a death in Venice. Uh, I, and she also, she or he also assumes you prefer, uh, that I prefer A.S. Byatt uh, to Margaret Atwood. Um, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I love A.S. Uh, by its uh, work, uh, but I also enjoy Margaret Edwards, so I wouldn't say that uh, that the prose of either one has a preference for me. Um, let's see here, uh, Joe Smith. Hello, Joe. <laughs> she, uh, Joe, is really one of those people who always uh, comments not only on my channel but on a lot of channels. So that she's a great subscriber. Um, I assume you have traveled extensively, six out of the seven continents, maybe. Uh, and, that when, and that when at home you always have a supply of good dark chocolate within 20 feet of you. <laughs> well, I don't know whether I traveled extensively, but I did travel quite a lot when I was younger. I don't like doing it anymore now. I don't know why. Um, and I've been to um, America, Asia, Europe... Um, and I think Africa, so it's four continents, four continents only. Um, and dark chocolate, I have to admit, I have a childish uh, taste when it comes to chocolate, so I prefer the really sweet uh, milk one than the good dark chocolate one. Well, let's see, the next one, one Z Angelique, one Z Angelique. Uh, congratulations of three-year YouTube. Thank you very much. Uh, I enjoy your reviews. Thank you again. Um, I'm assuming that literature is your number one passion, or is that too easy? Um, that's not too easy. That's definitely true. Uh, reading and literature and books have always been my number one passion, and that hasn't changed in all the odd years that I've been reading. Um, Andy Bunn says, um, I see you as a lady that know, knows her book. Um, uh, I really like the way you explain the story. It really helps if I would like to read it or not. Uh, I also see you as a very easy, easy person to get to know um, and very attractive. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, well, I, I I I try to when I when I talk to you about books, I try to know what I want to say. So, in that sense, I hope it's true that I know my books. Um, and um, a very easy person to get to know. I think I talked about that in in part one. Um, I don't think that's entirely true. Uh, I. Uh, I'm rather shy when I'm with new people um, and I don't like big crowds. I said that already. So it's, it, it, I don't think it's that easy to get to know me, I would say. Um, Stephanie, hello, Stephanie from uh, That's What She Read. Uh, please subscribe to her channel if you haven't. She does a lot of uh, horror. She has a podcast about horror, uh, which is fantastic. Um, you have tried an, uh, a true method for everything you do. You keep a tidy place and you enjoy romantic comedies. 
Well, to start with the last, no, I don't. I don't like romantic comedies. I mean, movies. I don't because they are so predictable. Um, I'd rather be surprised in movies. Uh, but I do keep a tidy place um, because I'm a lazy person and I'm... I have a tendency to slop, being a slob, so I need to keep a tidy place because otherwise it's getting completely out of control. And I don't know about the the true and tried uh, method, uh, but uh, I I hope I hope that's true. Well, in any case, thank you, Stephanie. Only a couple of more to go. Um, I think I can manage uh, only a two part video and don't need a part three. Um, Dragonfly Dream says, uh, congratulations on your three year anniversary on Booktube. Thank you very much. Um, um, I assume that you are a very thoughtful and compassionate person, but that you probably have a slight, slightly naughty and silly side to your character too. <laughs> well, I don't know about the compassionate and thoughtful part, but I can definitely say, yes, I have a slightly naughty and silly part to my character and my friends. Um, the, the, the people in my life who know me well will certainly agree on that. Um, I think that you would challenge everyday rudeness and sexism and you dislike reality, t reality TV and whilst enjoying the company of others you are perfectly content in your own company. Well, sexism and rudeness, yes. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? You know me. Um, I don't say, I don't have to say anything uh, other than that's true. I indeed dislike reality TV. I, I get bored with reality TV. I never really saw the the appeal. Even when I binge watch uh, shows, I tend to not um, gravitate to reality TV. Um, and it's also true that I enjoy company of people, especially good friends. I'm better in a small group, I said that multiple times, so with one friend or two friends and really have a, a conversation that is meaningful to me and to others. And I'm alone a lot and I am very much happy being all by myself. Uh, Maureen Kelder says, um, I assume that you do not suffer fools easily. You are professional and independent and intellectual thinker and always interesting to listen to. Well, thank you very much, Maureen. Um, well, yes, I would say to, yes to all the assumptions, of course. Um, I do not uh, uh, suffer fools easily. And of course, I'm very professional, very independent and very intellectual. Well, thank you. Um, Let's see, Susan Lay says, I assume you love chocolate, strong coffee, and dogs. Um, yes, yes, and yes, you know me well. Okay, on to the last couple. Sarah Lasko says, um, I assume that being a former lawyer has trained you to read an enormous amount and probably at a good speed. Um, well, that, that certainly helped. I mean, working as a lawyer means that you have to read a lot. Um, a file in a big case is like, you know, 20, sometimes 50 or more uh, big uh, uh, case files. Uh, but I think the, um, I've talked about reading speed before and I think uh, it's, it's first of all, it's, it's practice. If you read more, you read faster. Um, and I don't work, vocalize, so I don't speak the words in my head, which is the main reason I think, um, that your reading is faster. Um, and the last one <laughs> is from Jacqueline. Six minutes for me. Hi, Jacqueline. Um, I'm assuming you mostly read in ebook format. Um, and I'm assuming you have a successful rate of enjoying the books you read by debut women writers. Um, well, the ebook format is about half half. Uh, I read half of the books in ebook format and half, uh, about half, um, in physical form. It, de it depends on my mood. And I do enjoy uh, my reading, even if it's not a great book. Um, I enjoy the experience and I love discovering new authors. So the debut uh, thing, I try to read debut authors at least one or two a month and I definitely enjoy it. So those were, I think, uh, all of the assumptions that I hadn't already answered in the comment field. If I missed any, please let me know. I'm sorry, but I, I try to answer everything. And thank you very much for watching and sticking with it for two parts. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. 
Um, I'm looking forward to your comments as always, and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.